Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm so glad you're here. My name is Kelsey Derringer, and I am the Professional Development Coordinator for Bird Brain Technologies. So normally, that means that I travel around the country, and I teach teachers coding and robotics, and I teach them how to integrate coding and robotics into their classrooms. But during these interesting times we find ourselves in, I also get to teach students. So there are quite a few students who have joined us today, and I can't wait for you to meet them. But before we meet them, let's meet Matt. Hi, Matt. Hey, Kelsey. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing excellent. I'm excited to answer some questions that will be coming in from Facebook. That's right. So Matt is our producer and director, and he also is going to be monitoring our live Facebook stream. So if you're watching live on Facebook, if you type anything in the comments as we're going, he'll see it and he can tell us about it so that you can be part of our class as well. And that also goes for, um, we're going to be doing something a little bit different today in that we're going to be talking about moving masterpieces, which is bringing a famous work of art to life. But rather than focusing on building today, we're gonna to focus on coding and we're going to use Microbit Classroom to code. So if anybody wants to see some of the projects we built here, we're gonna investigate how they're built as we go. So if those inspire you to build your own, feel free to build your own moving masterpiece but I thought it would be fun to code these today. So we have a few folks who have joined us here on Zoom and you at home who are joining us live on Facebook, you can code as well. And I'll tell you how to do that in just a little bit. But let's meet some of our friends here on Zoom today. Everybody wanna wave hello? Hello. <laughs> Good to meet you guys. And I thought it might be a fun icebreaker today, a fun way for us to get to know each other, for people to share some art that they've made. So Sophie, do you want to go first? You have a moving masterpiece that you had made. Do you want to show us what you made? Sure. Um, mine is the, just like the dinosaur that was in her background. The, um, the cape lights up and the crown spins. That is really cool. That's based on a famous Basquiat painting. We have that um, behind me back here. Mine doesn't light up at all though. The crown just spins. So I like that yours has a cape and yours lights up. That's pretty fun. Connor, did you have um, some art or something you've been working on that you want to show us too? Well, I guess I, I'm still I'm still working on one of my moving masterpieces. Uh huh. It's not exactly um, a famous work of art, but I just like soccer, so I okay. made. Okay. Um, it's not really glued together. Oh so wow! That, Look at that here. And this player goes here, and I'm gonna make. I'm gonna put the popsicle, the the bowl on a popsicle stick with the position servo, and it's the position servo is gonna move, so the bowl, or the player stays. So the bowl, whoa, whoa, <laughs> it's gonna go into the net there. Yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. I'm really excited to see how that turns out, Connor. I really love the positioning that you have on that soccer player's body, too. It looks really realistic. Um, so if you want to keep working on that as we, as we program today, feel free to. Um, I know Sigrid had something she's been working on, too. Sigrid actually has something in common with a lot of her artwork. Do you want to show us a couple examples of some stuff you've been making? So, um, one of them is from a while ago, which is this giraffe, oh, it's so big. Um, <laughs> People might recognize that giraffe, he's made an appearance before. Yes, he has a lot of times. <laughs> Basically, yeah, it's cardboard, paper mache for the head, and you put it on your head. Except I can't do it because I have headphones on right now. So. <laughs> That makes sense. What other giraffey things have you been making? This is sort of a motif to use an art word. Yes. And a motif is something that keeps coming up in a in, in someone's artwork over and over. And so there was um, the thing where you can move the eyes. Uh -huh. uh, I forget what it was called. It was a bird brain thing. And um, I attached sunglasses, but you can take them off. Put them <laughs> over these things. Wait. And then, uh, That's great. So it's got sunglasses that it can wear. Yeah. I love that. Well, maybe you will make some famous giraffe art today. I'm excited to see what you come well, up there's, with. Well, there's that. actually one more. Show us one more there's real quick. Still and then I want a couple other more. people to introduce themselves as well. What's that? 
It's a toilet paper too. <laughs> that giraffe spot motif on it. That's stylish. Great. Very stylish. I love it. Well, um, I want a couple other people to introduce themselves as well. Um, so if we go to gallery mode real quick, um, who else is here? It looks like uh, Reed and Amor are here. Reed and Amor, uh, have you guys been making any art or making anything lately? You can unmute yourselves and tell us about it. We, well, me and Amor made, uh, we made uh, all, but we gave it to my grandma. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's really cool. So it's Reed, and is it Amor or Amore? Amore. 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 Thank you. I want to make sure I'm saying that right. Welcome, you guys. I'm glad you're here. And then um, we've got one more person here on Zoom who I think wants to introduce themselves. Kat, you have your art on display right behind you, and we are in love with it. You're using it as your background. It's so beautiful. Did you draw that? Yes. Yes? What, what, is, what did you draw? Can you tell us about it a little bit? It's a city. It's a city. Is it a floating city? Yes. It's really, really cool. I, I just love it, Kat. I, it makes me really excited to call on you because you have such a cool background. Looks like we might have a couple people who are here um, and want to chime in from Facebook. Who, who do we got, Matt? What's up? Well, we have Rachel from Facebook, and she just wanted to say that she has art in an art show right now, which is really cool. That's so exciting, Rachel. Congratulations. I've never had my art in an art show before, but that sounds really exciting. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to do a little bit of programming of our robots. And we're going to start with this Basquiat one behind me. And we're going to do it in a, way, in a different way from how we've done it in the past. We are going to use Microbit Classroom to... Um, uh, get our moving masterpieces moving. So if you've watched before or if you've participated before, today is going to feel a little bit different, but I'm really excited for how it's going to go. So let me go to the internet here and I'm going to split screen this. Oops. Oops. Let me come back here. Where's my control one? Check, check, one, two. Check, one, two. That's interesting. Check, check, one, two. Hmm, my video went away for a moment there and I'm not sure why. Give me a thumbs up if you guys can still hear me on Zoom. Can you still hear me? Okay, All thumbs right. up. You can cool. hear me. Give, give us just one moment. Yeah, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna close something down and reopen it and see if that will bring our video back. Doot, doot, doot. The joys of live teaching on the internet, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> um, uh, Reed and Amore, you guys said that you had made some art for your grandma, um, and you'd given it to your grandma. Oh, hello. There we are. Hello, I'm back. back. Um, and I would love later on to ask you guys what that art was like. Was it a portrait? Was it a landscape? Was it a sculpture? So think about that a little bit. We'll come back to you. Okay, so I'm going to um, uh, go to the internet here. Here we go. I'm going to pull up Microbit Classroom, and I'm going to, there we are. That's how that's supposed to work. <laughs> okay, so um, you at home, whether you're on Facebook or whether you're here on Zoom, you should do what this screen here tells you to do. So um, you might need to resize your Zoom window a little bit, but you'll wanna make it so that um, either you can use the same device, you can like resize your Zoom window so that you can see me in part of it and see like Google Chrome or another browser on another part of it, or you can use another device too. You could use your um, another Chromebook or a laptop, or you could even use like an iPad or your phone. It doesn't work quite as well on an iPad or a phone. It can be a little bit hard to manage, but um, you'll pull this up. And so um, you'll see when you go to microbit.org slash join, if you type that up in your browser window, uh, that's going to take you to a site where it's going to ask you to enter in these things, red, frog, tractor, gift, and then this number. So if we go to gallery view, oh, and then we're, we're typing that in the chat window too, so that if we go away from this, you can. No, 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 I don't want to do that. It's going to be too hard. Um, does everybody, does everybody want to join in here? Because as we, uh, as you join in, you'll see on the bottom here, I'll see your names as you join in. So like when, you know, Kat joins in, I'll see Kat's name down there, et cetera. 
And like I said, I think it was Rachel that was on Facebook. If you want to join in too, you certainly can. Looks like uh, Max, who likes to go by Lemon today. Hey, Lemon. Um, you have a quick question. We're going to go up and see you, Max. What's your question? Oh, you got to unmute yourself, though. What? I don't know how to get on to, uh, what is it called? Um, if you just go to the internet, so uh, just to get on this website, it's the microbit.org slash join. So if you just go to the internet, you can do that on your phone or an iPad or your whatever it is. Yeah, we just added that to the chat as well. So microbit.org slash join. And then, oh, it looks like Kat is here. Connor and Sophia are here. Oh, Secret is here. We're going to have to use your dad's computer for this part. And Reed and Amore, do you guys want to try this part with us? Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, we'll see you guys as you join. We'll kind of, uh, as we're, as people are joining here, just to explain to you guys how this is going to work, we've got this, this thing called Microbit Classroom. So the Microbit team made it up. It's really cool. And it's for kind of teaching, um, uh, teaching coding. And what we're going to be able to do is we're going to send you guys some code. So we're going to send you, for example, this like Basquiat code. And um, when we send it to you, uh, you're going to get the starter code and then each of you on your own, you're going to be able to make whatever modifications to that code you want to in real time. And then when you're ready, you'll raise your hand and say, I'm done, I'm ready. And we're going to download your code onto a micro bit and then we'll put that micro bit in our project back here. And so this project will run your code. All right. So it looks like, did we have a question or a comment from Facebook there, Matt? Uh, yeah, we did. Uh, Rachel just wanted to let us know that she was in our uh, call with the uh, arm. So she was actually visiting our classroom there. So she's just saying hi again. Cool. Well, that's great. Um, looks like we had a quick question from Sigrid as well. Do we want to go check in with you, Sigrid? What's up? Um, where are you going to send it? Um, well, once you're in the classroom, you'll see it'll come up and, and it'll be sent directly to you. So okay. it'll pop up for you. Um, looks like Connor and Sophia had a quick question as well. Yeah. Um, this is the first time we're doing this, so totally understandable. I, am I supposed to, uh, like, I'm on this page, I'm on the micro bit, like, like mm -hmm. where, where it has, like, the code and stuff and the micro bit yep. icon? Yep. Am I supposed Just to do chill out there. You're in the exact right spot. If you get to a, a page that looks like, um, that looks like make code, then you're in the right spot. I was just waiting for everybody to catch up. Looks like we might still be waiting on um, Amora and Reed, which is totally fine because we'll, we'll, when you guys join, I'll share the code with you that you need. And then one more question from Lemon. What's up, Lemon? I don't know if I'm in. Did you put your name as the letter M? Uh, no, I don't oh. know. Someone put their name as the letter N, which is cool. So I see Peyton, Peyton joined, which is cool. I don't see you on there yet, Lemon. Um, so if you've got, if we can come back to spotlighting me real quick. Um, this is where you'll, oops, uh, this one. Do, 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 do. There we go. Um, so uh, you can see who's joined. I've got Connor and Sophia, Kat, me, I joined myself as a student, M, um, Peyton, Seagrid, and then Moving Masterpieces. That one is something I'm gonna keep in the, the background. Um, and it looks like M might be uh, uh, Melissa, which is great. So we are glad that you're here, Melissa. Um, and so uh, we put the information to join in the chat. So if you're still working on joining, like Reed and Amore or Lemon, um, if you're still working on joining, um, you can join in anytime with the information that we put in the chat window there. Um, Reed and Amore, did you guys, oh, that's not a hand up. That is a thing that you're, I see what you're doing now. Okay, cool. So let me show you what's going to happen next. Do, 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 do. I'm going to come over here to Microbit Classroom. And here's my editor. This editor, and I'm going to get that out of the way. I built some code. And I'm going to zoom way in on it so we can all see it. I built some code. This is the code that is controlling Bosquiat behind me. So the rotation servo is going 15% speed one way. And then it's pausing. It's doing that for five seconds. And then it's going negative 60% the other way. So it's switching directions. It's doing that for five seconds. And then it's looping forever. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share this code with all the students in here. All right, students, I'm sending you this code. So now you can open it up and you can change it and make it something else. So you can change it to whatever you want. And when you're done, raise your hand like so. 
So this is what you will see on your screen if you are a student, because I also logged in as a student. So you can change it, change those numbers, change the wait time instead of 5,000 milliseconds, which is five seconds, change it to something else. And when you've changed it to something and you wanna see what it looks like, raise your hand like this, I'll put it on a micro bit and then I'll go put it on the project. I'm excited to see what you guys do. Yeah, Lemon, let's see if you're back on here, Lemon. Do, 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 do. Let's see if you have joined the classroom now. Finger stuck me for the class. Reed and Amore have joined. So Reed and Amore, give me a thumbs up. Did you guys get that code? Did I, did I send it to you? Yes, okay. And how about you, Lemon? You're not still in our classroom. Let me see if I can talk you through. Where are you now, Mr. Lemon? I'm in micro bit, um, and I don't know what to do. Okay, so did you type in this part right here? It says microbit.org slash join. Did you try type that into the top of your, your like Chrome browser up there? Here, here. Okay, looks like you might have forgot the slash join part. That'll get you where you need to go. So for those of you who are coding, when you have some code you want to try out, code it. let me know. Like this. Like this. Oh, Connor and Sophia, do you guys have some code you want to try out? Yeah. Okay, so now, this is for you teachers who are thinking about doing this yourself. Um, now I'm going to go to this incognito window that I have here. And I am going to go, oh, actually, I'm gonna go back to my classroom for a second. And I'm gonna look at my students, student code. So now I can look and see what Connor and Sophia have been working on. So they changed some things about this code. So to see what it looks like on a micro bit, I'm going to share that. I don't wanna share it with everybody else because what it's gonna do when I share it with everybody else is it's gonna replace whatever they were working on. I don't want to replace what they were working on. I'm going to send it to Kelsey student, which is me. So now I'm going to send that code to Kelsey the student. And hey, somebody sent Kelsey the student some code. So now I can use it. And now I'm going to download it with this purple download button onto my micro bit. Doo, 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 doo. When we download, this is what a micro bit looks like when it's downloading. It has a little yellow light that flashes. And have a smiley face so that means I can go put it on my Basquiat. Let's go see what Connor and Sophia's code looks like. Go. I'm gonna take the micro bit out. I'm gonna put a new one in. Do I need to restart the hummingbird Matt? Let's see. Uh, no, you will not need to restart the hummingbird. Oh so this is what your code looks like. So if we take a look at it here, their code and I'll zoom in on it so we can see it a little bit better. Zoom, zoom. Their code is going 50% one way and then negative 32 the other way. The 50% is probably the faster one and then the negative 32 is the slower one. There we go. Looks good, Connor and Sophia. Sigrid, do you wanna try your code? Yep. Yep, let's do it. And then it looks like we had a question from Lemon uh, Lemon, what's your question while well, I'm putting Secrets code on here? Uh, I got here and what's the pin? Ah, let me share the code with you there, man. And the pin is actually in the chat right now. Is it 972644? That is correct. That's it. You got it, Lemon. All right, I'm going to go to Secret. Here's Secrets code, and I'm going to share this again, not with everybody, just with myself, the student. There we go. So I'm going to send it. Cool. And then I'll go back over to my incognito one. Hey, my teacher sent me some more code. So now I'm going to download this. Here's Sigrid's code that she made here. Zoom out a little bit so we can actually see it. So she's got positive 85% and negative 70%. Let's see what see what this looks like. I'm going to download this onto another micro bit that I've got. And then Kat, do you want to try yours next? Yeah? What was the code again? Because we had to sign back out. 
Oh, I'll share it with you again. And actually, we're going to move on to, we're going to do Mona Lisa next, too. So we're going to kind of do these all in sort of rapid succession here. Okay. So I think I've got Seagrid's code on my micro bit now, and I'm going to go switch it out. Here's the code. Take out Connor and Sophia's. Put in Seagrid's. And Elise, if you're looking for any of the sign-in information, uh, it is in the Zoom chat. Okay. Whoa, there's what Secrets Code looks like. <laughs> Let's see why it's moving like that. So it's going back and forth really fast, and that is because it's got a really short amount of pause. So 200 milliseconds is 0.2 seconds. And so it's pausing just a little bit of time in between its movements there. So there you go. Let me check in back on our classroom. I want to see if anybody else has some uh, code that they might be ready. Let me check in on Reed and Amore. Did you guys want to try yours on there, Reed and Amore? Okay, let's do it. I'm going to share this one. Oops, I don't want to edit you. <laughs> I want to say something. Oh yeah, what's up, Secret? Um, the crown looks like it's shimmying. It does. <laughs> I like that. That's good. So I'm taking everybody else out and I'm just sharing it with Kelsey, the student. All right. So let me plug this guy in. This one's going to be Reed and Amore's. Now, Reed and Amore, can you guys unmute yourself for a second? Because I'd love to know, have you guys ever done any programming before? Uh, yeah, I actually have. My brother's sister, she works for Microsoft. And I got to test out one of the Microsoft coding classes. That is really cool. Uh, did you enjoy the coding that you did there? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Awesome, that's yeah. great. Well, here is you guys' code in action. I'm gonna switch it out back here. Did I do it right? Yeah, I did. Ooh, all right, let's see what we got. So it looks like it's going, ah, it's not moving. And I wonder if you guys can figure out why it's not moving. You change something in the code, which is really cool to change, but it made it so it doesn't work. Does anybody have any guesses? Why isn't, why isn't it spinning at all? Do you have a guess, Lemon? Uh, I don't have a guess, but I got in. Um, you got in? I don't know how to create the project. That's okay. I'm going to share what well, this is the last code we're going to put on Bosquiat back here. We're going to finish this one. And then you can jump in as we, we're going to do Mona Lisa next. So you can be one of our people to code Mona Lisa. All right. Cool. Does anybody looking at the code that Reed and Amore built, there's something that is making it not work. Does anybody have any guesses? They, they changed some really cool things, but they changed something that made this code not work anymore. Connor and Sophia, do you guys have an idea? What did they change that made it not work? Um, it might be a, it might be the speed. It might be the speed. The speeds look good, 23% and 32%. So it should be moving, but it's not moving at all. Ah, Melissa had a suggestion. She said, is it the servo? You're on the right track. Can anybody be a little bit more specific? What do you think about the servo? What did they change about the servo that makes it not work anymore? What do you think, Sigrid? Do you know? They put in servo two, but it's servo one. Yeah, so we could either fix that with programming or I could go plug that motor. If I grab out my, if I grab out a hummingbird, let me show you, uh, here we go. So when you guys changed it, I have the back there, I have that motor plugged into port number one. So when you guys changed it to port number two, that made it not work anymore. But why don't I go just plug this into the other motor port like that? and then it should work. Let's go test it out and see. Should I get, can I get a drum roll? No, please. Switch it to port two. It worked. So the way this is running now, it's going 32% speed and then 23% speed. So it's going a little faster and a little slower in the same direction. Can't necessarily tell that it's changing because not changing a lot, like going 100% and then like 10% would change a lot. But just switching it over to port number two, 
was a one way to make our program work. Very cool. How do you guys feel about switching gears now? Instead of doing Basquiat, let's, let's get in on this Mona Lisa action and you guys can make our girl look a little insane. Do you want to try it? Thumbs up if you want to give her a go. Yeah, lots of thumbs, looking great. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I am going to, uh, we'll, we'll spotlight me here. And what Matt's gonna help me do in the background is on that moving masterpieces. So I have another code in incognito window called moving masterpieces. So we're gonna prep that with some, um, some things for, oh no, we're gonna do, uh, I guess we could do Mona Lisa next. Yeah, okay. So we're gonna do Mona Lisa next. And she has got, if we look at what's plugged into her, we come to this one here so you guys can understand what this code's gonna do. She's got a motor plugged into port number one and it's a position servo motor. So this one works a little bit differently. It doesn't spin around and around and around and around. If I turn her this way, this one, it just moves back and forth. So the way that this is uh, constructed I'll zoom out a little bit here. The way that she's constructed, this is all just like different colors of paper that I layered over each other. But if I look behind it, there's actually this piece of cardboard here. That is a big round disc. And that disc is just turning back and forth ever so slightly, which is what's making her eyes look side to side. But as you guys can see, as she gets a little closer to the edges, her eyes look a little crazy. So I'm gonna share, do we have that code, Matt? Yes, we do. Cool. We're gonna share that code with everybody in Microbit Classroom. Um, so let's see. I'm gonna go back to the teacher view of Microbit Classroom. Here we go. Here we are. Uh, oh, that's my incognito one. Ah, here's the teacher view. And I'm gonna go to Kelsey, oh no, Moving Masterpieces. This is what the Moving Masterpieces account was doing. And so now I'm gonna share this code with everybody. So this is gonna replace any of the code that you built before. This is gonna be shared with everybody. And I see you in the class now, Lemon, so this one's gonna to come to you too. So I'm gonna send that code to everybody. So now everybody has some code that you can be writing for the Mona Lisa. There she is, I'll put her right in front of me so everybody can see it. So you guys can now edit this code. I'm gonna go look at the um, Kelsey student account so that we can see what that code looks like. There we go. So this is what the, the code that she's going to be running is. Right now she's just running whatever the last thing I put on her is, um, which is um, a little bit different. But this code, why don't we see what this one looks like? I'm going to download this, this code onto a micro bit so we can just see what this code looks like so that also you guys can get a sense for it. Do you like the way that this is working? So I'm going to download this one onto a micro bit here. Download. Cool. And I apologize in advance. I'm not entirely sure <laughs> what I built. So she Matt, may do something very scary. Matt built some code and it might be terrifying is what he just told us. So let's find out. Let's see how she's working with this code. And then this will also give our learners a chance to see if they like this code or if they really want to change some stuff. Okay. Putting this yellow micro bit in Mona Lisa now. And let's see how this looks. 85, 105, 90 degrees. <laughs> 85, 105, 90 degrees. She looks crazy, y'all. You need to help me fix her. <laughs> so, okay. So that's 90. So it went. Oh, which way is it turning? That way. Okay, so it's going 85, 105, 90. 90 is pretty close to where it probably needs to be. Why don't I grab a piece of paper and sort of demonstrate this a little bit? So I'm going to clear some stuff out of the way. Make it so creepy. I'm going to not color on my wood here. Thank you, Matt. Okay. So the way a position servo works, and I'll zoom in a little bit, is you go from zero to 90 degrees, just like a protractor. Zero degrees, oh, not 90. You can go to all the way to 180 degrees. And up here, does anybody know what up there is? Here's zero, here's 180. What's the halfway mark? 
What is it, Connor and Sophia? 90. Yeah, it's 90. Okay, so right now, if we look at her code real quick here, she is going 85 and then 105 and then 90. And just to show what that looks like, so we've got 85, 105, 90. And if I kind of hold that up in front of her, 85, 105, 90. So 90 is pretty close. 85 and 105 are too much. Oops. If I take a look at that, 85 and 105, they're really close to 90 degrees, but they're too much. So we're gonna have to find some angles that are even closer to 90 degrees here. So you're gonna have to find something that's in between 85 and 90 and something that's in between 90 and 105. Those are some of the angles you should change her to because right now she looks a little crazy. <laughs> She's like, this is like ultimate eye roll territory. Like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. She's, her eyes are rolling so much. They're literally rolling back in her head. Not good. All right, so let's check in with some of the code that our students have built. If I put that there, does it cover my face? A little bit, but I don't like my face that much. Okay, that's all right. All right, so you're finding an angle, some, something between 85 and 90 and something between 90 and 105, and 90 is okay. All right, so let's go back to our code here, and let's check in on our students and see what kind of code they are building. And it looks like we might have a couple friends that are done. Seagrid, looks like you might have one you wanna try. So she's got six degrees, 97 degrees, and 80 degrees. We can see how that one looks. Or do you wanna try that one, Seagrid? Yes. Yes. Uh, do you have a prediction for how that will look? I think six degrees will be totally off. <laughs> Let's find out. Let's see if you're right. So I'm gonna share Sigrid's code, not again, not with anybody else, just with myself as a student. Okay, I'm gonna share that. And then I'm gonna go look at it. I have a feeling that you're right, Sigrid, that this is gonna look insane. <laughs> Let's find out. Okay, I'm downloading it onto my micro bit. It's blinking for five seconds on the back. I call this the five seconds of panic. Oh no, oh no. And Lemon, are you done? Do you want to try your code next? Uh, I'm I done, but I accidentally um, logged out. Oh, you logged out? You can log back in, and I'll use your code that you did. So here's Seagrid's code. Woo! Look at. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. So something that you're finding out now about the construction of the Mona Lisa I'm actually gonna turn her off because I'm afraid it's gonna break something. I didn't think it could be broken, but Sigrid, I think you found a way, which is great. Um, but uh, what's the best way to show this? I think going down from the top here, if you look inside, you can see that the white of her eyes, this white of her eyes and the part that I've drawn the pupil on, it's just a piece of paper that I had taped to just part of that circular disc in there. You can kind of see it. And in Sigrid's code, if I turn it back on, you'll see that uh, we found the edge of the white paper. <laughs> so she has it going to six degrees, which is all the way over here, which is why you're seeing that white paper. All right, I'm gonna turn that off. And then uh, I know Lemon got logged out, but I really wanna try Lemon's code because we haven't got to try any of their code yet. So I'm gonna share Lemon's code with myself. All right, thank you. And I'm gonna show you what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna share Lemon's code with just me, not everybody else. And I'm gonna put it on this micro bit here, Lemon. I'm really excited to see what you did. Okay, so I'm sending it to Kelsey the student. And then I'm gonna go back over. Hey, my teacher shared some code with me, hooray. Ooh, interesting. This is gonna do some weird stuff, Lemon. Let's get weird with it, I like, I dig it. Oops, oh, sorry, that was me. That's all right. Okay. Whoa. Yeah, this interaction is a little bit weird. Huh. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Okay, so we're gonna download it. It's gonna go to 180, 105, and then 90, 
And the micro bit is gonna do some other stuff too. It looks like it might play a note for a beat. The, the hummingbird has a, um, it has a speaker on it, so it'll play this note. And I'm gonna be really quiet when we first load it in here so that you can hear that note and you can see what the micro bit is doing as well. Okay, turning it on in three, two, one. Did you guys hear it? That's the note that you played, Lemon. All right, so if we look at these, at this code that's happening down, down here, it's going 180, 105, and 90, but you made the pauses really, really short. So like 100 milliseconds is super, super brief. It's really short. Um, and uh, so we've got 180, 105, but it's barely having enough time to even get to 180. It's staying there really briefly. We're mostly seeing the 105 and the 90 is mostly what we're seeing. And then you also program the micro bit to have this cool um, pattern up here, which is cool. Does anybody else have a code that they wanna try and put on Mona Lisa? Looks like Connor and Sophia have one. Let's try and put Connor and Sophia's on and then we'll switch to our next robot because like time is passing so quickly. Because I also wanna do um, um, Jackson Pollock because Jackson Pollock has LEDs in it, which is really cool. Okay, so I'm gonna take Lemon's micro bit out <laughs> and I'm gonna, put, um, I'm gonna put another one in and this is gonna be Connor and Sophia's code. As you can see, we're sharing that Sharing that with ourselves over here. All right, so they've got an 88, a 97, and a 90. Let's try that out. Let's download it on here. Let's see how it goes. Download. Five seconds of panic. One, two, three, four, five. And then we get a smiley face. All right, got a smiley face. So now, drum roll please. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> that, 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 that's great. <laughs> she looks very suspicious to me. She's like, what, what, who, me, what, Mona Lisa, me, I'm Lisa, Mona Lisa, me, did you say Mona Lisa, me, hmm, 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 that's great. <laughs> so she's got a really, she's got a half second pause in between each of these because she's got a 500 millisecond pause. That is great. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Um, okay, and Reed and Amore, you guys had one, had a code that you guys wanted to try too, right? Okay, you'll be the last code we put on Mona Lisa here, and then we're gonna do some Jackson Pollock, baby. Oh, yeah. So as we're starting to put, um, as we're putting this code on here, the things that we've learned how to do, we've learned how to use pause blocks. We've learned what they do. Pause blocks tell us how long something's gonna last for. So like each of the positions Mona Lisa is putting her eyes at are gonna last for half a second. We've learned something about speed, like on the rotation servo back here. We've learned something about angles with the position servo that we've put there. And we've also <laughs> learned how to download stuff. And we've been doing all of this in a forever loop, which is what we're gonna continue to do. All right, oh, ooh, oh. Reed and Amore are gonna make this play happy birthday which is kind of, kind of great, because I don't know if you guys know this, but it's actually my birthday today. I don't know if you guys knew that. I'm turning 102, fun fact. It actually is my birthday, I'm not 102, but okay. We're downloading, we got a happy face, and I'm excited to have Mona Lisa sing me happy birthday. This should be pretty fun, let's see. <laughs> Thank you, hooray for birthday song. <laughs> That's great. And she's got a little bit longer pause in between the places her eyes are looking. There's, there's one angle that looks like it's the, the, that second one looks pretty good. That 98 degrees is like right at the edge of her eyes right now. This robot is kind of hard to program because you don't have to move the motor very much at all. And, uh, and she looks kind of crazy, but she did play happy birthday. So 
Thanks for singing me happy birthday, Mona Lisa. Thanks for playing me happy birthday, Rita Namori. That's great. <laughs> well, should we try Jackson Pollock now? I'm going to go switch these out. And what Matt is going to do um, in the background here while I'm switching these out, um, and, and while I'm switching them out too, Matt's going to build a little program uh, that suits Jackson Pollock here. We're going to investigate and see what's on there. But I'd love to go to gallery view real quick and ask you guys, what it, how, how's this going for you? Are you having fun? Like, how's anybody want to unmute and talk about how's programming robots remotely with Microbit Classroom? How's that going? You can unmute yourselves. Just chime in. It's amazingly amazing. <laughs> amazingly amazing. What do you like about it, Seagrid? What's fun? You can have fun with the robots. I, I and do silly things. I, I think it's better than the Zoom coding because cause most people, can do it at a time. Yeah, everybody can do it at the same time. That is really cool. It's going to play happy birthday once back there, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> So you guys like this way of doing it with Microbit Classroom even better than the Zoom thing because everybody can be working at the same time. That's really good to know. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, it looks like we might have actually had a comment come in from Zoom too. Um, and may I borrow the mouse for just a second, Matt? Sure. We share a mouse, me and Matt. It's pretty, pretty cool. Um, uh, Melissa said that she just emailed her district about the platform. Uh, she said she's writing curriculum using the Hummingbird and trying to figure out how to do some of it remotely, which is what we're doing here today. And um, yeah, we're, she said that she's really enjoying watching to like see how it's very possible for everybody to pull it off. So it's totally possible to have a few hummingbirds and use them to teach remotely. So it's really good to hear from you students too that you like how this microbit classroom thing is working. Okay, well we got Jackson Pollock here and while Matt finishes the program he's writing for it, let's check it out and see what's plugged in. Can we spotlight me again? Because I'm gonna take a look at the back of this robot here. Let us look at our robot. Okay, so this is a, a glued to the back of this painting here, but it's got no motors, ain't nothing gonna move on this robot, but there's a bunch of lights. So it's got two tri-color LEDs, and it's got three single-color LEDs. It's got something in port one, two, and three for the single-color LEDs. The yellow one is in port one. I don't know if anybody wants to write this down, but you don't need to, but there it is. The yellow one's in port one, the green one is in port two, the red one's in port three. And then there's also these tri-color LEDs that have red and green and blue in them. And so by mixing the colors, you can change them to be any color you want them to be. And so looking at it from the front, we've got a tri-color LED there, we've got a tri-color LED there, we've got the green and red, and there's the yellow one there. So this is where all of the LEDs are. There's yellow, green, red, and then two tricolors down here. And I think they're just kind of picking random times to flash and, and go. So I'm interested to see what you guys are gonna do with this. So let me bring it back this away. And we're gonna go ahead and share the code that we just built with everybody. So with our, our moving masterpieces, our, our extra, that was our other extra like student, um, we, uh, now you can see the code and I'm going to download this onto the micro bit back here so you can see what this code looks like in action. I'll give you a hint. It's kind of boring because I need you guys to make it more interesting. Okay. Um, hold on. Oh, let me, let me fix one thing. Real quick. Okay. Oh, Sorry, I see. Everybody. <laughs> made, made a coding mistake on my end. Matt made the same coding mistake actually that Reed and Amore did, which is you got to pay attention to which, um, port you're programming with. So we're gonna share this code with you. We're gonna share this new code with you. It's got a little, it's a little better to start with. There we go. All right, so if we go back to the Kelsey code there, we'll see what this looks like. Oops. Uh, yeah, and that one. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, so now we're gonna download this one on here and we'll show you what this code looks like. We'll save it. One, two, three. Okay. 
So we've got this guy's downloading, do 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 do, and got a happy face. Cool. I'm gonna put this in here. I hear somebody playing with sounds. I'm excited to hear what you play me. Oh wow! Ooh ooh, so bright, so beautiful. We'll come back here, and so we've got. Just the single LEDs rocking in this code. We've got LED one, two, and three, I think. Yep, one, two, and three. And if we look at that side by side with the code, I'll hold it up this way so you can see it. Um, LED one and then two and then three are coming on with a hundred milliseconds, so a tenth of a second pause. They're going bop, bop, bop. And then they're all going off at the same time. So one, two, and three are then going off at the same time. They're going. On, 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 off, on, 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 off, on, 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 off, etc. cetera. Um, so I wanna see what you guys come up with. This also has tri-LED lights in it as well. The, those are the ones down here. So if you wanna add those in as well, you can. And when, you're, when you have something you wanna see on this project, raise your hand and let me know. I wanna see what you can make. So for, um, for those of you teachers watching in too, I think it's really useful what Melissa was just saying um, in the chat window of trying to figure out how to do this, right? Like I've got, okay, I've got a hummingbird. I really like it. We were doing a great thing. I had a great plan for how to do this at school and we're not in school. And it might even be true that when we go back to school, you know, there might be some different solutions like doing things in pods or in groups or anything like that. Um, you know, where only a third of the kids or only half the kids are there for only half days. So like, how could you still do creative robotics when you don't have all your kids all in one place anymore? Well, we showed you one way with Nets blocks. We showed you a way with Snap um, programming using the remote control feature of Zoom. And now we're showing you how it might look if you do it with Microbit Classroom. And as you heard from some of the students who've been part of all of those, um, I think Sigrid's been with us from the very first one of these webinars we ever did. Um, this is, uh, they're saying that they really like using Microbit Classroom because it lets all of the students code at once. Um, and then we just download it, you know, one at a time and put their code on the board. Um, so you heard it. You heard it here, folks. They really like using Microbit Classroom. <laughs> um, Seagrid, do you have some code that you want to put on this here robot? No, but... Um, what did you want to say? Uh, if you mean I was there since the start, then it's the one where you were in a different classroom, actually. It's true. That very first one that we did, we were in a different studio. Um, been, it was been, way different. It was way different from this one, wasn't it? We've learned way a lot. in the back time, yeah. <laughs> back in the before time. Back in yes. The... Well, how about does anybody have a code that they want to try putting on um, putting on Jackson Pollock here? We just have a couple minutes left before we have to end. I can't believe it's already been an hour. Lemon, do you have one? Yeah. Let's see it, Lemon. Here we go. Okay. I'm gonna go to our code here. I'm gonna spotlight myself so that I can, so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm gonna go to lemons. Lemon, lemon. are you a bunch of L's now or are you? Yeah, I'm a bunch of L's. You're a bunch of L's, okay, because <laughs> you signed out and signed back in. Cool, let's see. Um, in here, I'm going to now share this code with nobody else but me, just me it'll replace everybody else's code. There we go. I'm gonna send this code to Kelsey the student and I'm gonna go check it out. All right, what do we got? Ooh, this is interesting. We've got in an on start loop, we've got something repeating four times, interesting, with some pauses, interesting. And then we've got something repeating a bunch of times, but it's also repeating in a forever loop. So it would repeat anyway, but I'm really excited to see what this is gonna do. I bet it's gonna be weird. I'm super excited. Okay, so we're downloading. Got our five seconds of panic here. Three, two, one. Smiley face. Okay, moment of truth. L, 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 L. Let's see what it does. Drum roll, please. Brrr.
It's doing high G, middle F sharp, middle G, middle F sharp. It's doing that four times with a pause. I think you might actually need to put pauses in between each of these here. Yeah, I should have done that. Can That's all right. You, you're learning. That's what we're doing here. We're learning. And let's check out these lights that are happening here. So we've got LED one, the, the yellow one, I think. Yeah. LED one is just on, but then two and three, they're kind of blinking on and off a little bit and go into some different percentages, like 55% and 27%. Yeah. So they're, they're sort of gently, and I'll go to my top down so you can see them sort of gently blinking a little bit. So they're going to some different brightnesses. They kind of remind me of a candle flame, actually. It's pretty cool. So they're flickering a little bit while LED one is just on. Nice. And, and you just learned why it's going ee and not changing notes as you need pauses in there. So let me go back to gallery view here, my friends. Does anybody else have one that they want to try before we end for today? You guys want to try one, Reed and Amore? Okay, I'm going to do Reed and Amore's, and then that's going to be the end of our webinar today. But after we're done, I'll try yours, Secret, okay? All right, so I'm actually going to unplug yours, Triple L, so it's really loud. And uh, it's a pretty good song, but it could use some, some other notes in it. Okay, so I'm going to... Um, I'm going to put, uh, let's see. All right, I'll go back to my classroom version of me. There we go. And I was going to do read and amore. There we go. So here's their code. Very interested to see what that will be. And I'm going to share it again, just with Kelsey, the student. Okay. Send it. Use it. Let's see. So they put a repeat loop inside of a forever loop, which will really just be like a repeat or a forever loop there. Because it's already going to do it forever. Okay, it's downloading and then we'll see what kinds of percentages they use. So they've got a 70, a 40, a 90. And it looks like LED one is going to go from 70 to 20. LED two is going to go from 40 to 50. And LED3 is going to go from 90 to 100. So I bet we'll be able to see this a little bit better if we go to the top down. Okay, so one, you can see one is kind of blinking a little bit. And then two and three, they're not changing very much, but that's probably because they're, the percentage isn't changing very much. So if we go back here, I'll hold this up. We can see that like LED2 is going from 40% here and then LED2 is going to 50%. So it's only changing just a little bit. It's changing by 10%. And LED3 is going from 90% to 100. Again, it's not changed very much. It's pretty bright and it's staying pretty bright. But we can see the LED1 flickering a little bit down over here because that one is going from 70 all the way down to 20. So there's a bigger difference in those numbers. So you can see that move a little bit more. This was really fun, you guys. I kind of can't believe it's been an hour already. This was really great. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to tell people how they can join in our future classes, and then we're going to end the live stream here. But um, for all of you folks who are on the Zoom call, if you want to remain on the Zoom call for a little bit, you certainly can, and we can put a couple more codes on uh, Jackson Pollock here. So if you want to join in our classes coming up, you can head to birdbraintechnologies.com slash robotics at home. There are so many great things to explore there. There are live classes to join. There are um, pre-recorded courses so that you can learn how to program your hummingbird and also learn some cool projects to do with your hummingbird. There are also remote robots that are available 24 hours a day. Those are set up in um, Dr. Tom Lauer's house and you can program them whenever you want to. That's all on this site here. Plus, there, are, um, there is a way for you to buy a hummingbird and have it delivered right to your house if you would like to. So um, all that is on our Robotics at Home site. If you have any questions about anything, please feel free to email us, info at birdbraintechnologies.com. And then please do be sure to tag us on social media as well, on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook. You can tag at birdbraintech or hashtag hummingbirdkit. We would love to see the moving masterpieces that you guys come up with. 
So um, from all of us here at Bird Brain Technologies, thank you so much for joining us. We're really excited to see what you make and code at home. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us today. We can't wait to see what you make on social media. On Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, you can tag at birdbraintech or hashtag hummingbirdkit, or you can even tag me. If you have any questions, be sure to email us, info at birdbraintechnologies.com. We can answer questions about purchasing, about learning, about teaching, and about professional development. If you haven't been there yet, be sure to visit our Robotics at Home page. There, you can purchase a kit for yourself, learn how to use it, and even join one of our upcoming webinars. Until we see you in class, thanks for watching from everyone at BirdBrain Technologies.